Welcome to the Natural Health Show with one of New England's leading natural health care specialists, Mark Mincola. Call Mark at 781-837-4900 on 95.9 WATD. He's waiting to hear from you. Welcome home, Natural Health Nation. Great to be with you on this humid, hot, but lovely sun, summer Sunday. And uh, we're here, of course, to talk to you about your natural health. And uh, per usual, we're trying to bring you some cutting-edge information regarding your natural health. And, uh, you know, on the 2nd of August, a fairly recent uh, study was published in the August 2nd issue of the Journal of the Natural Cancer Institute. And uh, Dr. Shivendra Singh from the University of Pittsburgh Cancer Institute uh, produced some remarkable results, interesting study about PEITC. PEITC, of course, is uh, something that you do know about. You don't know many of you that you know about it because most folks don't know what PEITC represents. It's phenethyl isothiocyanates. And uh, what we're really talking about is cruciferous vegetables, the, the kind that uh, so many folks uh, don't like to eat. The uh, green leafies, the broccolis, the cabbage, kale, mustard greens, Brussels sprouts, watercress, cauliflower, bok choy, collards, radish, turnips, etc. But these uh, PEITCs uh, have been studied by Dr. Singh at the University of Pittsburgh Cancer Institute uh, recently, and this particular study found that uh, the green leafies with their sulfur-based antioxidant support uh, really dramatically slowed down the development of breast cancer in mice. And these are mice that had human breast cancer cells implanted. And uh, over a period of 29 weeks, they were able to reduce the mammary carcinoma lesion, lesions by 56.3% in only 29 weeks. So once again, we, we know that uh, antioxidants and phytochemicals are very powerful forms of natural medicine. You know, for years, it seems like the, uh, the vitamins, the minerals of the world were the most talked about and the most studied uh, nutrients with regard to making a difference uh, with natural medicine. But uh, in the last 20 years, there's been some remarkable research. Again, and if you think about when uh, these antioxidants called phyto, phytochemicals or phytonutrients from mostly from fruits and vegetables uh, were first really studied, they were studied first in 1929. So in 1929, the first study uh, appeared, but since then, uh, there have been many, many studies, most of which have taken place in the last 20 years. So in the last 20 years, we've all but... Uh, upstaged vitamins and minerals with phytochemicals such as PEITs or phenethyl isothiocyanates. They're also called IC3s. And again, they're uh, very concentrated in their broccoli, kale, uh, cabbage family of, of greens. Those green leafy cruciferous vegetables with their high sulfur are uh, the PEITC rich uh, nutrients that uh, are vegetables and fruits that uh, we want to really focus on. And again, this particular study is one of many studies. There have over the years been a number of remarkable studies uh, pertaining to PEITC. It's been shown to promote cancer cell death or apoptosis. Think about what that really means. That means that it shuts down the ability of cancer to, uh, to replicate and it actually kills the cancer cells. And this PEITC is a powerful, powerful agent, again, uh, found in your green leafies, been shown to promote cancer cell death in lung, esophageal, colon, intestinal, prostate, and now breast cancer models. And we talk about 56.3% reduction in cancer development over a period of 29 short weeks. So uh, as, when they compare, rather, to the uh, to the animals in these particular studies that received none of this nutritional support. So you could actually think in terms of uh, your consumption of your green leafies, but you can also think in terms of your supplementation. Uh, we're going to talk about a supplement that I think is uh, a superb way to beef up your protection with PEITC. 
phenethyl isothiocyanate is a rising superstar in the area of natural medicine. The, these phytochemicals, uh, which we're going to talk about tonight, very powerful, powerful agents at pre preserving immunity and preventing disease. When we talk about food is medicine, these are the real essences of the medicine that you uh, think of as your food, your natural medicine that we think of as your food. So the power punch comes from agents such as PEITC, these high sulfur compounds, these remarkable uh, antioxidant agents that are anti-cancer uh, and have been studied extensively over the past 20 years. Uh, in addition, though, you know, folks need to realize that there are other healing properties of PEITC and the high sulfur cruciferous vegetables. Uh, osteoarthritis, skin disease, prostate cancer, we talked about retinal disease as well. So when you talk about the 12 major phytochemical families of foods and uh, their powerful antioxidant support, uh, the isotheocyanates are the shining superstars that we're going to talk about tonight. So uh, we're going to be back from these messages to talk to you more about this remarkable study and its inferences as far as uh, what we can do supplement-wise. There are some very important uh, supplements that you can supplement your program with to beef up and protect yourself against the ravages of cancer. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. All righty, welcome back. And, of course, uh, during that last series of ads, you get to hear the golden throng tones of one Laura Pratt from Good Health Natural Foods. Laura will join us a little bit later on the broadcast, and we look forward to hearing from her because she has some very special news coming about uh, to present here on the Natural Health Show about good health, some uh, a brand new scoop for you all. So uh, stay tuned for her interesting interview at uh, 840. So uh, we'll be checking in with Laura Pratt. And uh, until then, we're going to chat with you about this interesting PEITC study, phenethyl isothiocyanate, big long terms. Of course, that's what science tends to do with these, uh, these long words. Uh, slows breast cancer in mice, and these are animal uh, cell lines. They're, I should say they're animal implants, the uh, human cancer cell implants into these animals. And uh, the mice were fed the green leafies as opposed to a group that were not fed the green leafies over a period of 29 weeks. The ones fed the uh, cabbage, broccoli, etc. over the 29-week period at a 56.3% reduction in mammary carcinoma lesions. So their, uh, their cancer rates slowed significantly because of the phenethyl isothiocyanates. Really and truly what we're looking at is your, uh, your cruciferous vegetables and ways that you can drive up the nutrient supplies in your chemistry of these isothiocyanates derived from the breakdown of sulfur. And that's exactly what these are. These isothiocyanates are derived from the breakdown of sulfur in your cruciferous, cruciferous vegetables. And uh, one of the things I did mention at the uh, outside of the broadcast is there's a great way to do that in, uh, in supplement form. And I like the Jaro formulas, of course. I always talk about Jaro being one of my favorite uh, over-the-counter products. But Jaro formulas makes a product that I really do like called Bracca Max, B-R-O-C-C-A-M-A-X, Bracca Max. And uh, many of these studies that have taken place show five, the equivalent, uh, human equivalent of 500 milligrams twice a day seems to be quite a preventative when it comes to a variety of cancers. Again, PEITC has been shown to promote cancer cell death. Apoptosis is just that, cancer cell death, killing cancer cells in lung, esophageal, colon, uh, intestinal, prostate, and now breast cancer models, quite aggressively at that. So a great uh, way to protect yourself against the ravages of cancer, to me, would be to certainly increase your consumption of cruciferous vegetables, but also to think about supplementation with, with a little bit of boost here. And the Jaro formula's Bracamax is 375 milligrams. And uh, we're thinking in terms of two to three of those per day. And uh, hopefully you got plenty of green leafies in your program. Got to have them. Um, I also wanted to mention, too, that there are other phytochemicals. You know, what are phytochemicals? You heard me mention that uh, word on the, on the broadcast tonight and, and many times in the past. These are plant-derived Phyto means plant, of course. Plant-derived chemicals, many of which are beneficial to human health and uh, disease prevention. And it's a rapidly expanding area of nutrition, as we talked about earlier. But there have been around 4,000 
4,000, 4,000 phytochemicals that have been identified to date. And uh, 150 of those 4,000 have been studied extensively. So there's, when you think about this area, this is a burgeoning area of research. And uh, thankfully, there's just a, a tremendous amount of interest, focus, and expenditure that's being directed into this area of phytochemical research. Again, there are over 4,000 that have been identified, but only 150 have been studied to date. And the nutritional therapeutic effects continue to evolve in research study after study. But I'm just going to give you a little bit of information about some of these. There's, there's, uh, we talked, we're talking tonight really about the uh, green leafy uh, vegetables. We're talking about the uh, isothiocyanates and a lot of the phytochemicals within them there's many different phytochemicals within your broccoli, cabbage, uh, kale, mustard greens. There's one called brazenin. Brazenin is a very powerful agent found in uh, cabbage and, and found in your broccoli, etc. And it's very powerful antioxidant properties in animal studies been found to reduce tumors of the breast and also tumors of the skin as well. And uh, a lot of folks, of course, concerned about skin cancer and uh, really important that you do have good protection these days. Uh, there's also a group of agents called dithiothiones, dithiothiones, broccoli and cruciferous greens as well. Now, the dithiothiones are really interesting because they stimulate enzymes in the glutathione family. Now, for folks that are always thinking about taking glutathione, you keep reading in many of these health books and many studies about the power of glutathione. Glutathione is arguably the most powerful antioxidant to protect you against genetic uh, problems with, with mutational response. So in other words, we get 30,000 DNA hits a day. Think about that. Your DNA gets bombed 30,000 times a day. And uh, your immune system, more often than not, holds together, protects and defends you through these, these uh, onslaughts. But uh, one of the things you want to be thinking of is the single most, well, I should say, one of the single most important uh, antioxidants that protecting you against these 30,000 DNA hits a day is clearly glutathione because glutathione is the preeminent uh, protection that we have against free radical scavengers, uh, against free radicals rather. It is the scavenger that gobbles up these free radicals. So glutathione is something we can't really... Um, we, we, we could take it in supplement form, but to, to take it directly in supplement form is not easy to uh, assimilate. I always tell people it's really not that easy to, to, uh, to break down, to absorb, to assimilate. But the dithiothiones in broccoli and cruciferous vegetables stimulate our production of glutathione within our own body. So they make us more independent. They make us more, more capable of producing our own. If you're going to take a supplement to try to build up your glutathione, I always recommend that you take um, N-acetylcysteine. N-acetylcysteine is a precursor to glutathione, and it helps your body to once again get into the business of protecting itself by producing higher levels of glutathione. So of all the different antioxidants, everybody's, of course, aware of vitamin A, and everybody's aware of beta carotene, vitamin C, vitamin E. All these antioxidants are clearly important, no question about it. But I would tell you, bar none, the most important, crucial protection that you have at a DNA level every day of your life against the mutational ravages of cancer, heart disease, etc., is really L-glutathione, which is, again, the powerful free radical scavenger that protects you and vacuum cleans out these radical troublemakers in your, in your chemistry. So the best way to build up your protection is in my opinion, to eat plenty of these green, leafy, cruciferous vegetables because of the dithiothiones, broccoli, uh, mustard greens. We keep talking about all these great uh, green leafies. But uh, these are some really good reasons why. And again, if you're going to supplement yourself for glutathione, N-acetylcysteine is the way to go, and I'd recommend 500 milligrams of N-acetylcysteine twice a day. As, uh, as we said earlier, the Jaro formulas makes a terrific uh, supplement that's called Braca Max. It's basically... Sulforaphane, it's, it's a, a PEITC supplement. And uh, about 375 milligrams per tablet, per cash, it's a capsule, and I recommend two to three capsules per day. Uh, we mentioned the isothiocyanates. They are called indole-3-carbonyls. And once again, cruciferous vegetables are loaded. And, you know, there's an awful lot of, of 
chatter about uh, about good estrogen and bad estrogen for years. In fact, folks still saunter into my office with bad advice regarding soy. Makes me crazy. Oh, I can't have soy. I can't have soy because uh, soy is an estrogen, and I, I get really worried about soy and uh, the risk factors associated with with uh, estrogen based foods like soy and breast cancer. Everybody is forever and forever complaining about the uh, you know the soy problem, and there is no soy problem. We're, we've created a soy problem. You know, soy produces a 1.6, I'm sorry, a 2.0 alpha hydroxyesterone. The dangerous estrogens are not in plants. The dangerous estrogens are in animals. And the American Medical Association for years treated women with estrogen replacement therapies that were animal-based. So estrogens from horses or estrogens from animals, such as human animals, are potentially very, very toxic. They are 2,000 times more concentrated than any plant-based cruciferous estrogens. So the, the background estrogens that you get from plants are they're, they're modulators. They're, they're absolutely incredible at, mod, at uh, moderating and modifying your production of healthy chemistries that are hormonal and that are not dangerous. But when you think in terms of dangerous estrogens, plants don't produce them. Um, in fact, I just made a note to uh, Dr. Xu's study. I want to just kind of talk about that for a minute because I think this is pretty important stuff. Dr. Zhao Xu, medical doctor and researcher at Vanderbilt University recently, this is about a year ago, I believe it was, uh, looked at 9,500 women, 9,500 women over an extended period of time, found that the highest users of soy, and these are women who have already been diagnosed with breast cancer, and we're talking about recurrence of breast cancer, women who are already diagnosed and uh, and 27% reduction, they found, in those who use the risk factor, I should say, in recurrence for those who use the highest amount of soy. So the women who uh, had already been diagnosed once with breast cancer and had been cleared of their breast cancer, who were the highest users of soy products, had a 27% reduced risk for reoccurrence of breast cancer. All right, 27% reduced risk for reoccurrence of breast cancer. So that's really re- important, and it, and it ties in directly to what we're talking about because there are mod- there's uh, some remarkable modulators here that are estrogen-based modulators in the world of plants. Cruciferous vegetables are among them, and the indole-3 carbonyls, like these PEITCs that we're talking about, these high-sulfur uh, cruciferous greens, your broccolis and cabbages, modulate estrogen metabolism by increasing the ratio of good estrogen, which is the 2.0 alpha-hydroxyesterone, a cancer protector, you hear that one, a cancer protector, versus the 1.6 alpha-hydroxyesterone, which is a cancer promoter. There's a, there's a distinction to be made here. This, this business about just kind of lumping all estrogens in the, in the mix together is crazy. You can't do it. Again, it's so important to hear this. That uh, in, until Dr. Shu's wonderful study, I mean, people at uh, you know at their oncologist's office routinely, and they're still being told as we speak, to stay away from soy. Don't eat soy. Don't eat soy. Wrong. It actually is a cancer protector. It's a modulator of estrogen metabolism by increasing the ratio of good to bad. It actually antagonizes bad estrogen. And again, keep in mind, animal-based estrogens are two thousand times stronger. So they're very dense, and uh, they're very hard for the body to move out when they are toxic. But the greens that we're talking about, the indole-3 carbonyls, the green leafies, especially mustard greens. Mustard greens have a load of these uh, estrogen uh, modulators in there. So uh, mustard greens and soy are a great way, a great way to protect yourself against uh, breast cancers. Also, uh, there's something called ultipraz, O-L-T-I-P-R-A-Z, ultipraz. And ultipraz is a a phytochemical in cabbage in your cruciferous greens. And once again, it's an antioxidant which stimulates the glutathione production and can protect liver cells from aflatoxins. Again, we think about aflatoxins. Aflatoxins are molds. Peanuts actually have a lot of aflatoxin mold in them. So folks wonder why peanuts are not the best thing in the world to eat. There's a lot of reasons, but aflatoxin mold is one of them. All right, let's take a call from Mary. Mary, welcome. How are you? 
Good, Mark. How about you? Good to hear from you. Good. Oh, great. Hey, thanks for taking my call, too. Um, this Brocomax sounds great. Is it is it processed to the point where the glycogens are negligible if you're dealing with thyroid issues? You know, I think that you still want to be careful. I think uh, you're probably one of the few folks that if you do have hypothyroid, you want to be careful about the, the dose anyway. But at 375 milligrams, you might thread the needle with just one capsule a day. Uh, you might try instead to think in terms of uh, keeping the pro-goitrin response low by just using your cruciferous green vegetables by the plenty and steaming them. Because, again, keep in mind, I, we should probably bring everybody up to speed real quickly here. But, folks, I think what you, what you want to hear about this and what Mary is referring to is uh, green leafy vegetables, these cruciferous vegetables that are so, uh, so anti-cancer, so we've been talking about tonight, are also potentially problematic uh, agents that can block the thyroid's absorption of iodine. They're called pro-goitrins. Uh, so the way to neutralize that negative effect is to just not eat them raw. What do I mean by that? No coleslaw. Or when you go to the salad bars and you're trying to lose weight and you're eating the raw, the raw, veg, the, uh, raw broccoli, for example, in your raw salad, you want to make sure you do not eat raw broccoli or the raw cabbage in your, uh, you, know, you don't want to use any kind of uh, uh, these green leafies in their raw form. You want to make sure they're all cooked. So for kale, any of those things, uh, we grow organically here, but as long as those things are all cooked. Yeah, like I said, they, no, no coleslaw and, and no, right. no raw broccoli at the salad bar. That's, you don't want to go in that direction, I think, but... You can neutralize, I think, the, the potential problem here by just making sure that you're cooking or steaming your green leafy vegetables. That destroys a lot of the pro-goitrin activity, allows the, the iodine to be absorbed in the thyroid. Otherwise, there are problems with some folks, not everybody, but some folks who have low thyroid have to be careful about their raw consumption of these cruciferous vegetables. So it is a great point. Uh, by steaming them, cooking them lightly, you neutralize that. No more problems. As far as the supplements, I think that just uh, the dosing is probably the key answer there. I think one a day probably threads the needle, keeps your, uh, keeps your protection up, but at the same time not uh, overburdening your thyroid with any problems that are pro-goitrin. Generally, those supplements that have um, soy content are better to stay away from those too with thyroid? I would say yes. Okay. I would say yes. Can be pretty concentrated. They can be pretty concentrated, yes. Okay. Okay, well, thank you so much, hey, Mark. Hey, thanks for calling. Be well. Always appreciate it. You All too right. now. Yeah, Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye. All right, let's talk about the phenethyl isotheocyanates, the PEI PCs, cabbage, turnips, all other gr uh, gruciferous vegetables. A powerful antioxidant, especially good at protecting your DNA. As we said earlier, you're taking 30,000 hits. You need protection more than you may be aware of. And for all intents and purposes, that's really how disease manifests. You know, we're, we're talking about genetic expression. You know, it's kind of like saying you have a bunch of flash bulbs in your body that are ready to go off at any given point in time, and it just takes triggering. So these various uh, uh, disease potentials that everybody's born with in their genetic map are, for all intents and purposes, like flash bulbs ready to go. But they require triggering. Triggering. So we all basically are exposed to these free radicals in a variety of different modes. Free radicals are a normal background part of life. You know, background radiation, for example, we're, we're, we're all constantly getting hit with potential triggering agents in our diet, our stress, et cetera, et cetera. So you want to make sure that you are protected because you can't stop those triggers from firing. You just have to hope that you have the immunity to stave off the, the uh, development of any kind of disease potential here. And you can with these green leafies. I think they're on the top. I always tell people, you know, when you think about fruit, fruits are wonderful. They do have a sugar content, obviously. The vegetables have a much lower sugar content. So of all the living antioxidant-rich foods, I always tell people the single most important are vegetables. And uh, the green leafies are, in my opinion, the most important. And, and it is probably important to mention, too, that a lot of folks who are on Coumadin, for example, warfare and blood thinner, obviously have to be careful of vitamin K. So uh, they're probably the folks that uh, are the most unfortunate of all in this particular sense that they're uh, not able with that particular medication to, to eat these green leafy vegetables. I'm sorry to say. Hey, we're going to take a short little break and be right back. Stay tuned. 
All right, welcome back. You know, I wanted to kind of take a minute to uh, talk about other research that's very similar to this University of Pittsburgh uh, study, this current study. Uh, so let's see, this is uh, a John Hopkins University study in Baltimore exposed laboratory animals in a powerful cancer-causing agent. Animals given high doses of sulforaphane from mustard green oils had a 26% risk uh, for developing tumors compared with 68% for the group that didn't get the compound. So the comparison, again, is only 26% of the green leafy animals uh, develop breast tumors compared with 68% of the group that did not get the protective compound. So again, we're talking about getting your protection with green leafies, protecting yourself against cancer. Um, also, doctor, uh, there's a re- researcher by the name of Dr. Uh, Bradlow who has uh, done a lot of studies at the Strang Cancer Research Institute. And uh, they found that the equivalent of 400 milligrams, we talked about 375 milligrams being in the Brocamax, the jar form of Brocamax. And Bradlow says only 400 milligrams a day, uh, which is about the equivalent of half a head of cabbage, uh, and cre- delivers the harmless effects of estrogens in the body. So it alters the ratio from good to bad estrogens in the body. So folks who have really concerns about the uh, the estrogen active cancer response in their in their chemistry and again if that's if that's part of their genetic makeup that uh, they've had this particular problem uh, in their family line then the I3C supplement is really really helpful and again the indole three carbonyls are really important and they've also been found to be very effective against cervical cancer as well uh, and that's done that's based on research done at the Strain Cancer Research Institute in New York. Uh, but to just take a step back again about soy, uh, we talk about soy, really the importance of understanding. I, I can't tell you how many times I have to go through this, and I'll keep doing it, but I, I just feel like people got to get this message, really. Asian women have breast cancer rates five to eight times lower than American women. One of the main reasons, of course, is because they're big soy consumers. In a landmark study of 140 3,000 women in Japan that spanned 17 years. That's a huge, huge study. 143,000 women, 17-year study. Researchers found that the women eating the highest amount of soy had the marked, marked lowest interest, of, uh, lowest uh, incidence, rather, of breast cancer. So a significantly reduced uh, rate of breast cancer among those women that are the big soy eaters. Again, women in Asia have basically five to eight times lower the breast cancer risks of American women. And again, it's pretty much about the soy. So these are really important uh, protective agents that, that, among other things, help to... If you get your ratios of good to bad estrogen up, you can really neutralize the, uh, the risk factors. Also, I wanted to mention the sulforaphane, which we've, we've talked about a couple times this evening. An isothiocyanate found in Brussels sprouts, broccoli, cauliflower, kale, etc., that activates phase 2 detox, phase two detox. Now, most folks don't know what that means, but it's really important because phase one detoxification is pretty much intestinal. And phase two, not everybody produces. And the idea is whether you're just kind of recycling toxins in your body or whether your body is really active at getting rid of those poisons. Um, So that even if um, someone's intestines are cleansing themselves, And they're having good movements every day and good uh, intestinal uh, removal on a daily basis. That's wonderful. But phase two is not a a guarantee. So even folks who are having uh, normal bowels that cleanse every day may have a liver problem that that liver is not detoxifying. So there's what are called phase two liver enzymes. And uh, the broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, kale have a high concentration of sulforaphane. And again, the Brocamax is that sulforaphane. Anybody really interested in detoxing their body at a deep, consistent daily level, the Brocamax is a great way to do it. It is a sulforaphane, and it will increase phase two enzyme activity in your liver. And that's the real clincher because folks, again, Detox isn't just the bowel. Detox is all about phase two. Phase one is all right. It's important, of course, but most folks overlook phase two, and that's all about liver detox. And uh, again, this Brocamax, because it's a sulforaphane agent, is a great, great way to detox 
phase two and to get that liver moving and to get those liver enzymes active. The other thing I want to say about that is I know a lot of folks come in from time to time after having blood work done at their doctor's office and uh, the doctor gets nervous that their liver enzymes are elevated. Will something like this elevate liver enzymes? Yes. Yes, and it's not always a bad thing that liver enzymes are elevated. That's really important to know that. If you're taking an herbal supplement, if you're taking Brocamax, it may increase your liver enzymes, and that's a good thing. You want those liver enzymes activated. So the average person who is not particularly healthy and isn't really taking their supplements uh, would never see those livers, liver enzymes elevated for good reasons because they're not doing enough good things that could conceivably raise those enzymes. So if you take the Brocamax or if you're using a powerful herb, getting your liver enzymes activated, your phase two liver enzymes are detoxing, there's going to be the release of these enzymes. They're going to show up in your blood. Don't get nervous. Tell your doctor you, you know all about it. You heard it on the program. You're okay, all right? And uh, do we have Laura on the phone yet? Laura is on the line. Hey, we've got Laura Pratt on the line. <laughs> Laura Pratt, how are you? Hi, hey, Mark. How are you? Good to hear your voice. You too. How's hey. your summer going? It's going great. How about you? Good. Well, we have fun news. Yes, you do. You've Can got I big share? news. We need a drum roll right now. Yes. Take it away. Good Health is moving across the street into the former Blockbuster building, and we're thrilled. And that is going to be an absolutely remarkable move for you guys. It is. Long time coming. We looked at it, looked at lots of places for many years, wanted to stay in Quincy because we have great customers, wanted to keep our prices low, but most importantly, we wanted to have secure parking for our customers. You know, Quincy's a bustling little area. It is. And you guys got to have that parking. That's going to make an, all the difference in the world. I'm hoping that our customers would just be as excited as we are. So it'll be no hassle parking, seven days a week. New space, day day. new image. It's going to be. You should see it, Mark. It's it's just handmade, beautiful, crafted cabinets and counters, gorgeous hardwood floors, really spacious. Incredible, open incredible. Aisles. It's just. It's going to be gorgeous. I can't wait. When is the uh, when is the day that we can actually uh, pop in there and check it out? Well, I don't have a date for you yet. We're going to have a grand opening, sort of mid to end of September. Uh, we're shooting for Labor Day to start the move, but we're going to have a big party and lots of festive things happening come the end of the month. That sounds great. So tune in, and we'll, we'll have dates for you later. So we want everybody to know that Good Health Natural Foods in Quincy is a 36-year <laughs> institution. Is we that, are. Isn't that right? The Quincy Center destination for everybody. 36 years. Isn't that amazing? Wow. And you've been around probably longer. I think you started. <laughs> I started. Actually, no, I started. You know, I met Ralph and Diane probably about uh, 30, 32 years ago or something yeah. like that. They were just in the small little corner store there. And uh, wow, what a tremendous, tremendous uh, evolution. Well, you've been with us the whole way. Every step. And by the way, you've been with us every step of the way here on the Natural Health Show. And we should take a minute to thank you and Ralph and Diane, everybody at Good Health Natural Foods, for being so. Uh, consistently supportive here on the Natural Health Show. You guys have been our flagship sponsor from day one. Well, and we, we're grateful that we could do that with you because it's really important to support you and all the local communities. So it's very, very important. Well, it's mutual. It's reciprocal. And we're, we're really fortunate to, uh, to have you in our community here as well. You know, one of the things I want to talk about here too, Laura, is, mm -hmm. you know, service oriented shopping is something that uh, is becoming a dinosaur. It's a thing of the past. You walk in most places and there's somebody chewing gum who doesn't want to spend two seconds with you. <laughs> and uh, you go in Good Health Natural Foods and there are people who know what the heck they're doing, where stuff is, how to give you good advice and how to set you about your way in a good, in a good manner. We're lucky. We do have some really knowledgeable, great people that care. It's not just a job. They live it. We have the vegans, the vegetarians, the nutritionists, the herbalists, the bodybuilders, and uh, they love doing what they do, which is helping people make decisions and, and helping them get healthy. So. Well, you know, once again, it's, it's a refreshing thing to walk in a store and have somebody look at you in the eye and actually act concerned about your well-being and interested in sharing information with you. And at Good Health, that does happen, folks. Well, thank you. I have to share one quick story with you because it's sure. so funny. Every day, people come in with these long lists of this sort of scribbled text. <laughs> and I say, 
Have you been to see my friend, Dr. Mark Mancola? Because that <laughs> handwriting looks very familiar. It's totally illegible. It's called hieroglyphics, <laughs> actually. Uh, I'm, I we mastered in hieroglyphics. Through, but thank you for referring all your clients to us. Hey, you know something? It's a, it's a pipeline. I always say that uh, you're kind of like the pharmacy for natural health down there because you guys have gone out of your way to put... Th- well, we've been talking to folks tonight about Brocamax. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's a classic example of... There's great research out there. We want to bring this research to people because people really don't entirely get the other side of the story that food really is medicine. It started out that way, folks, at the beginning of time, and uh, we kind of got away from it, and now we're getting back to it with, with the vengeance. There's studies and there's science behind this movement that says, yeah, hey, remember, food is your first medicine, and we're getting back to it as, uh, as a, a clean alternative to take care of your body. So these great studies are what we, we use as this, uh, this program's forum. And to share these great studies and to share this really important information that food is medicine is only half the battle. The other half the battle is we have to be able to facilitate folks with product yeah. to, to make sure they can get their organic cruciferous vegetables and to pick up their Brockamax tomorrow morning. That's what it's all about. And you guys help uh, complete that cycle. Well, we're a good team. We work well together. We are indeed. Here, here's a question that I'm often asked. How does good health keep those prices so low? It's a mystery. It um, is a mystery. You know, we just, we're not in it to rip off the consumer. We find the best products, we negotiate the best pricing, and we just don't have raises. I mean, we don't, we don't sort of put the sale sign on every item and then jack up the price. Right. And I think that's how some other retailers work it. Well, I have another answer, too, that sort of ties in with your answer. I think Ralph and Diane are people, again, I've known for 30 years. They are old school. So they're in the business of, of being really legit. They're in the business of, uh, of making it a 50-50 proposition. We give you great service, great prices, and we want your trusted uh, business for as long as we can keep it. And that's kind of old school stuff. That's how they've built such a loyal clientele. 36 years of truthful, honest retailing. And how do you train your folks to know so much? They, it's, part, it's a passion. If you, if you have the passion and you, and you read and you learn, we learn from you all the time. We learn from our customers. We learn from each other. It's a great... Um, I've got, I got to believe you really screen very intensively, though, because it seems like the folks that you get in there know a great deal before they even get started. Well, you know, Mark, it's all about uh, personality, and, and drive. If mm-hmm. people come in and say, I love what you do, I love your products, I want to learn more, and they have that passion, then I'm tempt- I'm most- I usually hire them. Well, you certainly are doing a great job at it. So the new space will be available for folks to peruse sometime yes. the end of September, yes? Yes, and the lot is available now, so everyone is, is welcome, and we encourage them to park in the lot and uh, come on over and shop with us now. And the new store opens later in September, and watch for the date for the grand opening. So you're not just saying, hey, if you've got a dentist appointment downtown Quincy, come on in and park there. You're saying, no, <laughs> it's really important that we, we make sure there's plenty of parking for, <laughs> for our customers. I got it. And it's really, really uh, going to make a huge difference when we talk about uh, the, uh, the shopping experience because uh, it's not easy when you've got to basically double park or park that car and wonder how long you, you're going to be and you've got to rush in and rush out. But now... Leisurely shopping. Yes, they can relax and not worry about anything. And just browse through that. And there's a lot to do in there. There's a lot of great books, such as the Mark Mancola authored books that uh, you yes. can find good health natural You're going to come in and sign some books for us. I'm going to do a book right. signing. We're going to do that. I'm psyched. So I thank you for having me on tonight. It was great but, talking with you. Well, and it's wonderful to hear your, your golden throngs again, oh, too. Oh, thank you. And uh, your Give commercial. My best to your commercials sound wonderful as usual. Oh, thank you. And uh, I still want you to make some meditation tapes for me, though. <laughs> <laughs> I put you to sleep, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Laura Pratt, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Have, Have a great night. night. We look bye. forward to the new store. Thanks. All right, bye. bye-bye. Anyway, so that should be a very interesting experience, and uh, that'll be toward the end of, uh, I guess it's going to be toward the end of September, early October. So be looking for the all-new Good Health Natural Foods across the street from where it is now, where it has been for years. Larger facility, great parking, and uh, as she said, quite a lovely, lovely piece of property there. So it's going to make the experience all the better, and that is special news for all of us. Hey, we're going to take a short little break, and uh, we'll be right on back. Stay right where you are. All righty, welcome back. And uh, let's see here. Michelle Riley just uh, presented me with some of your questions for this week. And don't forget, uh, the uh, Natural Health Show is also on Ustream and 
It's linked up to Twitter and Facebook, so we love to take your questions through those mediums, or you can call us anytime if you wish. And uh, let's see, we've got uh, a question from Ann Farrell. She says, any questions for a Morton's neuroma? That is a benign uh, neuroma, and I would recommend, you know, because of the pain and numbness of the condition, I'd recommend something like serapeptase. I like the Enzymedica, 100,000 units. I would recommend three a day on an empty stomach. That's serapeptase, S-E-R-R-A-P-E-P-T-A-S-E. I'd also recommend some uh, methyl B12, M-E-T-H-Y-L, methyl B12. Again, I like the jar of formulas, methyl B12. And not to be shy about it, about 5,000 micrograms, MCGs, of methyl B12. So those are the two things I'd recommend there. Serapeptase by Enzymedica, 1,000, or I'm sorry, 100,000, three a day on an empty stomach. And uh, methyl B12 from Jar of Formulas, 5,000. All right, let's take uh, a question from Kimberly Mansfield. Uh, she says, my doctor has advised me to take a vitamin D supplement since I am deficient. If my multivitamin has vitamin D in it, should I take the supplement as well? Great question. Yes, I would say you should. Uh, first of all, vitamin D uh, in supplement form is generally between 1,000 and 2,500 units. You'll never get higher than that. So it would be easy for you to supplement with uh, another 2,500 units. I'd say not to be shy about that. Vitamin D is very well tolerated in the human body, and uh, very rarely do people have too much vitamin D. So obviously, if you have a shortage, don't be shy. I'd say that you could take another 1,000 to 2,500 units easily. Okay, let's move on to uh, just a comment, I guess, from Kevin Smith. Kevin Smith just wants us to know, Good Health Natural Food Store in Quincy is outstanding and service is outstanding. I love the store and will recommend everyone go there. So there you go. That's from Kevin Smith, Kimberly Mansfield, and Ann Farrell. So again, if you have your questions each and every week, uh, please fire them up through either Ustream, Twitter, Facebook, uh, or you could uh, just call the radio show, of course, if you'd like. It's 781-837-4900. And we gladly take your questions and answer them uh, through this format. Also, we wanted to get back on track here about uh, sort of summarizing what we've been talking about, the Dr. Shivendra Singh of the University of Pittsburgh Cancer Institute uh, had a, her study published in the August 2nd issue of the Journal of the National Cancer Institute. And uh, again, a fairly recent study just published in, on the 2nd of August. And the real key here is PEITC is what was studied, phenethyl isothiocyanate slows breast cancer. And again, we're talking about breast cancer in mice that uh, were implanted with human breast cancer cells. And uh, interestingly enough, I think that this is uh, uh, a study that is for all intents and purposes already happened. Uh, let's just say here, Kevin Smith, am I supposed to read that? Kevin Smith, oh, this is a question. I heard a, stu a study on ALS and was uh, linked to gluten. Have you heard of gluten causing ALS? Uh, that is from Kevin Smith as well. Well, you know something? Um, gluten has been associated with virtually everything you can imagine. So um, I have not heard of that particular study, but uh, I'm not in the least bit surprised to know about it. We've got uh, Tom on the line. Tom, welcome. How are you? Good, thank you. Thank you for taking my call. Pleasure. Uh, a moment ago I heard you talking about uh, hypothyroidism yes. and the need to cook uh, certain vegetables. Yep. Yep. Um, I had read online that uh, strawberries as well and all kinds of nuts should be avoided as well if you suffer from a hypothyroid. Well, yes, yeah, there's a number of different foods. I think the most common things, are, you know, the, because of our topic tonight is the, uh, is the green leafies and the, uh, the cruciferous vegetables that we wanted people to know that uh, if they're thinking about this cancer protection but they have low thyroid, they might want to consider the fact that these could indeed be representative as Progoitrins. Progoitrins, of course, are the, uh, the, the elements that uh, block the thyroid's absorption of iodine, which is not a good thing. The, the thyroid obviously needs iodine. It's very, very important to the thyroid. Um, but you're right. I mean, the, the strawberries also can present that problem. If you just look at PRO, the, the first part of the word is spelled PRO, and the second part of the word is G-O-I-T-R-E-N, progoitrins. And if you do uh, any kind of Google searches to all the list of pro-goitrin foods, you'll find quite a few of them. And you're absolutely right. Strawberries and nuts are among them. So um, in the case of the green leafies, uh, such as we've been talking about tonight, it's so important, uh, Tom, to get the protection from these green leafies. But at the same time, it's really important to understand that you can indeed protect yourself simply by cooking them. So that's not a big deal. See, I hadn't known that. And I'd been avoiding them 
uh, for probably close to a year, ever since I was diagnosed with hypothyroidism. Um, because, you know, I had heard that broccoli and cauliflower and cabbage should be avoided because they interfere, as you said, with the iodine absorption. Yep. So, so it's good to hear that you can, in fact, eat them because I really enjoyed them. No, it's a great point. I think that it is uh, important for folks to get this message that these are, these are, you know, for my money, they are the, the superior, the most superior of all foods. I mean, that's a hard thing to say, but I will say it. It's my, just my opinion. You know, proteins are important, of course, you know, the, the building blocks, et cetera, and repair work. And that's, I always refer to proteins as the Department of Public Works, and they're also very important. You know, your fruits are, of course, very important as antioxidant-rich, phytochemical-rich foods. Uh, vitamin rich foods, a lot of vitamin A, vitamin C in your fruits and stuff. But, uh, you know, these green leafies, for my money, are numero uno. There's nothing better than these green leafies. And for, for many of the reasons we're talking about tonight, they're, they're super important with their sulforaphane. Uh, they protect, again, great studies showing the protection against osteoarthritis, skin diseases, prostate cancer, uh, and to uh, and retinal diseases as well. And again, the cancer studies to date have shown. Uh, apoptosis, cancer cell death, and lung esophageal colon, uh, intestinal prostate, and now breast cancer models. So you can't beat that. Well, they're going back in my diet. Just cook those babies up and you'll be in good shape. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate it. All right. Bye-bye. Right, bye-bye. Um, yeah, and I guess, and I guess. the the, uh, the only other important thing to remind folks of is if you're on warfare and if you're on uh, Coumadin, unfortunately, which is, you know, I mean, it's not the... Uh, not the best thing in the world to think about eating these green leafy vegetables uh, when you're going to have to take warfare and because the two are just not a very good combination. Uh, you got to be very, very careful of the vitamin K re- response with your warfare. And, and uh, again, that's uh, something you better take up with your physicians. But if you're on blood thinners, we could, uh, could be in trouble here with these green leafies. Other than that, we're in pretty good shape. And um, I also want to mention, too, that uh, the soy issue, that, that there are really a lot of folks that... Uh, I think really need to hear that soy is a protective agent against negative estrogens. Again, there's two different types of estrogen. The 2.0 alpha hydroxyesterone is the protective version that a lot of these, like mustard greens, for example, have. Soy, of course, we talked about having the same properties. So don't worry about that. I think you're safe. Uh, as far as the supplement form, I mentioned the Jaro formulas, Brocamax, B-R-O-C-C-A-M-A-X. That is a 375 milligram capsule. I recommend two, or in some cases, as many as three a day to make sure that, <clears throat> excuse me, you get your full complement of sulforaphane. And uh, the Jaro Brocamax is as good a way to supplement that as, as anything. But to try to get it from your foods and try to make sure your foods are organic versions, get on down to Good Health Natural Foods and try to get the uh, organic Greens, those uh, really important broccoli, kales, cabbages, mustard greens, Brussels sprouts, watercress, cauliflower, bok choy, collards, radish, turnips, etc. That's where you want to go. Hey, wow, this goes by very, very fast. Great to have had you here with us here on the Natural Health Show. Each and every Sunday at 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, 95.9 FM, WATD. And uh, we'd like to also thank Tim, did a great, great job, of course. Tim always does a wonderful job behind the board. And we'd like to thank Michelle for doing a great job here, Michelle Riley. And uh, we got to thank Candida, I guess. What the heck? We'll thank Candida tonight and Ed Perry, as always. And uh, this is Mark McCullough reminding you all, please, be wise, be aware, be well. Make it a healthy week. Good night.